Hey guys, here's an update on my Maker Gear M3 ID Rev1 printer and just my learning experience with ownership and learning how to slice and print things. So, a couple things I've learned. One is that over time, the build plate will get bubbles like this here. And this is a polyamide tape layer over top of a slab of borosilicate glass. So at some point when that gets bad, you have to do some kind of replacement. Now that can be done a couple different ways. One, you can either replace just the polyamide tape layer and there you can get those die cut for 10 bucks a piece from Maker Gear for this size. The only thing is it's a pain in the butt, so I've heard. The other option is you can get a whole new piece of glass with the tape on it for $24. And that might just be worth paying for to save the headache. Somebody I know who has an M2 has told me about a product from BuildTac that is actually a replacement bed that is magnetic. So it's a two-piece kind of deal where the top layer, you can pull it off with your part still attached to it. And it's made out of some type of... I don't know, spring steel, but you can bend it and that will crack away from your prints. You can release them very easily and you can just stick it back on after that and it's held in place by the magnets. And those will wear out in a, as well, but replacement uh, build pieces uh, for that are only about 11 bucks from Amazon. So that's an upgrade I'm thinking of doing, but that just to get the, the main uh, the magnetic base plate or whatever that is, uh, the whole kit would be about 80 bucks. So I haven't decided yet because this is still a tolerable amount of bubbling. Uh, some other things I've learned is I've really printed with two kinds of materials so far, PLA and ABS. So ABS for the uninitiated uses much higher temperatures and it kind of reeks not in a really foul way but it's very strong and what I rigged up to manage that is this little extraction hood and I found a little four inch duct fan that I turn on when I'm using ABS and that does a lot to get rid of the smell however I will caution you having this up too high messes with the temp the ambient temperature of your build area and can affect your prints negatively. So more is not always better when it comes to fume evacuation in 3D printing. Something else I noticed with the Maker Gear is when printing ABS, the bed has to get up to 115 degrees thereabouts and it just takes a while for that temperature to ramp up. Not not like half an hour or anything, but still, if you if you want to just get a print started like that, you got to wait. Whereas the PLA, that's been very easy to use, and it does not reek, and the temperatures are lower. So I've had pretty good success with both, but the only downside of the PLA is that it's a little more expensive, and I'm sure there's mechanical dif differences, but for the things I do, it's not a big deal. So anyway, that's just an update. Uh, as far as printer setup goes, when I first got this thing set up, this printer came with a license to the Slicer software, um, Simplify 3D, which has been a great software package, but it's by a third party, so it's not Maker Gear specific. You have to load a few different profiles to tell it that you have a Maker Gear system. Now when I did that, the first time, I didn't go through all the steps, so it knew the, it knew the size of my build plate, but it had trouble with the two different heads, so I had my right head crash into the left one during my first print because I didn't have it set up properly. So that's something you have to really pay attention to when you, when you first set it up. But other than that, it's been really neat, and I've, one of the things I've learned lately was that when I'm printing straight vertical sections, as long as you don't care about the physical or the visual appearance, you can use 
relatively high or tall layers. In this case, I'm printing 0.3 millimeter layers for the sake of speed. But you can do multiple different processes on the same part. So once this part reaches a certain height, which it hasn't done yet, it will switch to just using 0.2 millimeter layers for added definition when you start to um, have more contours and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. This is the first time, well, second time I'm doing that. And that's really slick. Anyway, still having fun with it, and I will keep you updated as I gain more experience.